Hey everybody, it's a bright sunny day here in San Antonio, Texas, and I am so excited about today's lesson. Why? Because we're going to be talking about the musical modes. So you definitely want to watch this one, especially if you've ever had questions about the modes. What are they? What are they called? And how do you play them? How do they work? Why do I even need to know them? I know you've probably got a lot of questions. So I'm walking through the neighborhood right now, just kind of getting myself ready. <sighs> getting conditioned because there's so much we're gonna talk about. So buckle up, get ready in three, two, one, let's go. Okay guys, so in today's lesson, we're gonna talk about the musical modes. And I'm sure you've probably heard this. You might know a little bit about this already. What I'm gonna to try to show today is not only how to play them, but a couple of different ways to play them or locations to play them on the bass and a little bit of the application on how you can use these modes in some of the music that you might be already playing. Um, some of you are probably using them and you may or may not know that you're using them. So we just wanna bring some awareness to some areas, show some fingering and some exercises and things you can work on uh, to make playing these a little easier. So here we go. We'll work in the key of C today. We'll try to have some fun with this, okay. So the first mode is called Ionian mode. So whatever key you're in, Ionian mode simply is the major scale. For example, if we're in the key of C, an Ionian mode, another name for that would be what we would call a major scale or a C major scale in this case. So we'll start on C and we'll play from C to C. Now in the key signature for C, there are no sharps or flats. So we're gonna play Ionian mode, which is simply a C major scale starting on C. We're gonna play C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And so we just played it for one octave, ascending and descending. And we'll just work with one octave for right now. So there's our Ionian mode. It's a C major scale. Now within that C major scale, what we'll do is we'll start on a different scale degree each time. So the first note in the key of C major was C. So now we'll start on the second note, which would be D. So the second note is where we're going to start this time. And this mode would be called Dorian mode, Dorian mode. And again, all of the same notes from the key signature for C major will just start on the second scale degree. In other words, the second note of the major scale, which would be D in this case. And we will play D, E, F, G, a, B, C, D. Now watch this fingering. So I'm playing here D, E, F. On that one string, then I'm jumping to G with the first finger, A with the fourth finger. And then there's this jump to B here, C, D. So it's the only mode in this fingering um, pattern that we're using right now that will use a, a, spa a distance of five frets. All the other ones you can play within a four fret uh, range, but this one we're gonna have to stretch that one finger to play the B. So we're gonna play D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. So that's the second mode, that's Dorian mode. Now we'll move to the third mode, which is Phrygian mode, Phrygian mode. We'll start on the third note in the key of C major, which is E, and we'll play a Phrygian mode. We'll play, it. We'll play E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. There's our Phrygian mode, the third mode. Then we'll move to the fourth mode, which is Lydian mode. And we'll start on the F, which is the fourth scale degree in the key of C. And we'll play F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. So there's Lydian mode. Now we'll move up to G and we'll play the fifth mode. This is called Mixolydian mode. Mixolydian mode. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So 
there's our mixolydian mode. Now we'll go to the A and play the sixth mode, which is aeolian mode, aeolian mode. And we'll play A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. seventh scale degree which in this case is B since we're in the key of C B is the seventh note we will start on B and we'll play B C D E F G A B and after that that takes us back to Ionian mode scale just an octave higher than why we start than where we started from so those are all the modes now let's go back and talk a little bit about how we can use those different modes in our music so part of the reason I played them that way was number one to help us practice where the notes are located on our fretboard um, not just the notes but even the patterns you know because again on the bass guitar we have similar patterns and shapes that we play no matter what key we're in because of the way the instrument is designed. So that kind of works to our advantage on a stringed instrument. And so what we're practicing is where to locate these things on the fretboard, number one. So we're learning the fingering, but also if you listen to each individual mode of the major scale, you'll start to notice some qualities and some things that remind you of, of other things you might, you know, be using already musically. And for example, each one of the modes has an overall sound, whether it sounds major or minor or somewhat diminished. There's a scale that we already know that it will be closely related to because that's really what the modes are. And so what we'll notice is that there's two very distinct modes. There's the Ionian mode, which is clearly a major scale. And then the other one you probably noticed was the sixth mode, Aeolian mode, which we started on A in this case. And we played A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. And you probably recognized immediately that that sounds exactly like a natural minor because that's what it is. It's a minor scale, natural minor scale. the other modes sound a little bit major a little bit minor but they all have a variation and there is multiple ways to use these things so we'll just take our time and look at some of the elements of these modes and see what they are closely related to and how we can use some of them so let's go to that second mode let's go back to dorian mode we play d e f g a b c d so when we listen to the Doria mode, let's look at uh, the arpeggio, if we will, if you will, for a moment. Let's, moment. let's look at the arpeggio for Doria mode. We have a D, and when we're spelling out arpeggios, we'll deal with one, three, five, and seven for this case. So we'll deal with one. We'll skip the second note of this mode, and we'll go to the third note of this mode, which will be F. So D, skip the E, jump to F. We're gonna skip the G and go to A. We're gonna skip the B, uh, the B and go to C. So one, three, five, seven, five, three, one. So when you listen to that, it sounds just like a minor arpeggio, a minor seventh arpeggio. If we were playing a natural minor arpeggio, we would play the same notes. One, three, five, minor seven, five, minor third, one. So the Dorian mode is very closely related to a natural minor scale, but it has one variation. And that variation is the sixth scale degree. One, two, three, four, five. A natural minor would have a minor six, but we've got this major six in the Dorian mode. So one, two, three, four, five. Major six is our variation. Seven, minor seven, one. So the only difference in a natural minor and a Dorian is the sixth scale degree. It's very important to remember that. 
So another name for the Dorian mode is called a jazz minor because a lot of times in jazz versus classical, in classical you're used to hearing you're used to hearing a natural minor. Whereas in jazz, when we get these minor chords, uh, you'll usually play what we call like a Dorian minor is, is a great option to play over that. And so it just has a different sound. It kind of brightens up on that sixth scale degree. So that's one of the you know ways to use a Dorian mode. And we'll talk about that more when I do a more in-depth lesson on each individual mode. Let's keep moving. So the third mode, Phrygian mode, will start on the third scale degree. Let's play the arpeggio for that mode. Let's play one, we'll skip the second note, which was F, and we'll go to the third note, which is G. So we have an E, G. We're gonna skip the fourth note, which would be A, and we're gonna go to the fifth note, which would be B. So E, G, B. And what do we have next? We're gonna skip the C, and we're gonna play the D. So we have an E, G, B, D. Well, that arpeggio is very similar to the Dorian mode arpeggio. It's very minor. So the overall sound of the Phrygian mode is a minor sounding mode. So it's another alternative to use when you're playing over a minor chord. If you want to improv if you want to improvise over that minor seven or that minor nine or of a minor eleven chord, minor eleven chord, you can use that Phrygian mode as uh, the scale you want to use. So what makes it different from a natural minor? Well, the natural minor we would play an E, we would play F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E. But in this Phrygian mode, we're playing an E, then an F, then G, A, B, C, D. So there's only one scale degree that's different. It's the second note of the of the mode. So E, F. So the second note is half a step lower than it would be in a natural minor. to use when you're playing over a flat nine chords. And again, we'll discuss this much more in the more advanced uh, um, lesson that I'm gonna prepare over the modes. So there's a minor option there. Then we get to the fourth mode, which is our Lydian mode. It sounds very much like a major scale. Let's play the arpeggio. One, we'll skip the second note and go to the third note. We'll skip the fourth note and go to the fifth note. We'll skip the sixth note and go to the seventh note. So, major seventh arpeggio. So it's very similar to the major scale, but one scale degree is different. And you're gonna notice this to be the trend with the modes that there's one scale degree that'll be different. We'll talk about where that changes in a moment when we get there. So what was the one interval that was different? It's the fourth scale degree. One, two, three. Instead of playing that perfect fourth from the where we started, we're playing that uh, uh, sharp four. One, two, three, four. So that's the only variation is the fourth scale degree from a major uh, scale. It would be a major scale. that um, again if we're in the key of C and we're on the four chord which in this case would be F and we want to just improvise a little line you could play that over that F major seven chord because you know if we were in the key of C we're playing over an F major seven chord as the four chord that would be the perfect uh, mode to use to just kind of outline what's going on musically there with that B instead of the B flat yeah. to the fifth mode, mixolydian mode. We're going to play one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, then one. Let's look at the arpeggio. We have one, we'll skip two and go to three. We'll skip four and go to five. We'll skip six and go to seven. So we've got a dominant seven arpeggio. 
In other words, this mode would be perfect for playing over dominant seven chords. In fact, if you start to notice some of the notes, you'll realize that you've probably played that pattern of notes over dominant seven chords before. It's got a very bluesy sound to it. scale to use over a lot of blues and uh, fusion lines over dominant seven chords. You can use that mixolydian mode. Then we talked about the aeolian mode, which is our natural minor, so we'll skip it for now. We'll go to the locrian mode. Now this one can be a little tricky because it's so close to the root and we're so used to playing our uh, regular major scale, but we're going to start right here with the first finger and we're going to play the B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Now this one's going to be a little different when we look at the arpeggio. We're going to play the first note, and we're going to skip the second note, and we're going to play the third note. We're going to skip the fourth note and play the fifth note. We're going to skip the uh, sixth, uh, sixth note, and we're going to play the seventh note. And so we have. So this is the first time we ended up with a situation where it's not major or minor, but it's diminished. So it's very closely related to, again, a diminished chord. While there is a little bit of variation in the entire scale from a diminished scale, uh, the, out, or the arpeggio is simply a very diminished arpeggio. It's one, a minor three, there's your flat five. this diminished triad and then there's that seven that flat seven so how could you use this in you know a musical application well let's look at some of the intervals that are pretty interesting from the starting note to the next note from the B to the C there's a half step interval that happens and so we could use this over uh, a certain altered dominant chords, a uh, flat nine. Whenever you have like a dominant flat nine, this would be a great um, scale or mode to use. In fact, it works pretty well over, you know, all, it, pretty much most altered dominant voicings, but especially the flat nine because you're playing that. Then you've got this flat five, so you could use over a dominant flat five as well. And again, this one we will talk about in much more detail in a lesson that is very specific for that mode. Okay, so we've kind of given a rough general survey over how you can use some of these modes. I want to show you now another way to play all of these modes in one place, especially on a five string bass. If you have a four string, it's going to be, you're not going to be able to do the same thing that I'm about to do. But on a five string or more, you can play all of these modes in one position without moving. And so we'll go through that really quickly, and then I'll show you an arpeggio um, pattern to practice playing through the arpeggios of all the modes in one position. So we just played through all the modes going up the scale. We started on C, we started on D, we started on E, we started on F, we started on G, A, B, and C. Well, now we're going to do all that same thing, but just in one position. We're going to start on C and play Ionian mode. And then instead of changing position, we'll stay here and play Dorian mode. I'll play that again.
And so here's a cool little arpeggio exercise to do that'll help you get used to playing through these modes. It's a great fingering exercise. It's just all around good for stretching your fingers and just kind of building up your dexterity. But it's also very musical. If you just get used to playing through these, you'll be able to use these a lot of times in your improvisation, either over a bass line or even while you're soloing. So we're gonna start, we're gonna do a descending and ascending alternating arpeggio exercise over the modes. I know, it seems like a lot, but once you get used to it, you play it a few times, it's pretty simple. So we're gonna play the one, five, three, one, descending. We'll start there on C. So one, five, three, one, through our Ionian mode. Then we go to the second degree, which is Dorian. We're gonna play one, three, five, one. We're gonna go up. So we came down. When we get to the second note, we'll go up. D, F, A, D. Then when we get to the third mode, we'll come down. We'll come down. Then we'll go up on the fourth. Then when we get to the fifth, we'll come down. We'll start on G. Then when we get to the sixth mode, we'll go up. When the seventh come down. And then go up on the first. And then if you notice this time, we're going, we're ascending where we were first descending. Remember when we started, we came down on the C. But this time we're going up on C and coming down on D, on the Dorian. So, then we'll go up on the Phrygian and then come down on the Lydian. Up on the Mixolydian. Down on the Aeolian, up on the Locrian, and then now back to where we started, down on the Ionian. That's a lot to say and talk about, <laughs> so I'll just demonstrate it slowly, and it'll make more sense than my rambling trying to talk and play at the same time. So I'll play it very slowly, descending and ascending, alternating. It's not something that you have to practice very fast. You can speed it up a little bit. So you don't have to do it very quick. I mean, it's really pointless to do it fast unless you just want to pull a lick out of there and play it real fast. But for the most part, the more, the more important thing to practice with this exercise is just memorizing and getting this visual of where these things are located and just getting used to playing them and recognizing them, where they are on the bass and how they feel. So here's the last thing I want to show you in this first phase of the lesson on modes. I want to show you that when we played up all through all of those modes throughout the, the whole neck, and it seemed like a, a lot of disconnected, you know, patterns, and you're trying to put it together, like, how is this related to C major? I don't get it. Let's look through all of these modes, and let's just see if we can find where the root is, where one, we're in the key of C. So we're gonna play C major scale. There's our C major, there's one. We're gonna play the second mode, the Dorian mode. Where is one? Without moving, one is right here. There's a C, there's a C right there. So there's home. So you also find another fingering now for your C major scale through knowing the, where the Dorian mode is located. So if you're in the middle of the song and it puts you on the two and you need to know where you are in relationship to one, well, you know through your Dorian mode how to get to one. One is there. 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 One
that's there. So let's go to the third mode. Let's start on the fridge end. Where's one? There's one. So you're always able to find where one is from where you're starting. There's the fridge end mode, and there's one. Lydian mode. Where's one? All right. So you know where one is from there. Mixolydian mode. Where's one? Right? So we can always find one from Aeolian mode. Where's one? There's one. From Locrian mode. Where's one? A half a step away. So we can always find where our root is from where we're playing, no matter where we are in the progression, no matter uh, what line or lick or scale we're playing through. You always want to be able to know where one is, where is home, you know, where is um, my root. So hopefully a lot of those uh, tips and that instruction helps you with kind of just getting a grasp upon the basics of playing through the modes, recognizing them. Get, it, get a general idea of what each one sounds like, what makes it unique. You know, um, obviously the Ionian mode and the Aeolian mode, the Ionian mode is a natural, you know, it's a major scale, and the Aeolian mode is a natural minor. But the other ones, what are they closely related to? Just remember that, practice hearing them, and find ways to use them over certain chord alterations. And even through just, you know, your general major scale and your minor scale, um, your basic major and minor chords. There's so many ways to use these and we'll talk about that in much more detail I'll go through and teach on each mode specifically and how to use it So hopefully that's enough to kind of get you started on Understanding modes recognizing them playing them getting it under your fingers uh, You have any questions or comments or anything you want me to cover in more detail please mention it in the comments any lessons that you want me to cover that I haven't covered yet, I've got tons of things in my mind that I want to cover. I just need time to get to filming them. Uh, mention that in the comments. Like, subscribe, you know, like, subscribe, you know, uh, share this. Like, like, subscribe. What is, don't be like a scribe. No, like and subscribe. And share these with your friends that are learning how to play. If you already have this stuff down, but you don't have time to teach it, you know someone that's trying to learn share it with them send it to them again comment anything you want me to cover and i would be glad to cover that in more detail or make a completely new lesson about it all right thanks for watching stay tuned for more